Hello, dear listener. This is Remy Duvall here. Are we experiencing a colored crime wave? Well, I'll be joined by New Bordeaux Police Chief Earl Wilson, who will tell us what he's doing to keep us safe and what we can do to help. That's New Bordeaux Police Chief Earl Wilson on Native Sun. Native Sun! Welcome back to Native Sun, dear listener. Woo, I tell you what, it's been so hot. I'm liable to wilt in his booth here. <laughs> the air conditioning's out, and bless him, poor Chief Wilson is doing his best not to die with me right here in this studio. Well, what he's trying not to say is poor Earl's been making too many trips oh. to the bribe. <laughs> oh, now you said that, Earl. Oh, right. Those are your words. I was telling Remy here before we came on, what did I say? Uh, oh, yeah, the heat. It brings the out heat, the Cayune, yeah. Remy. Right out. Brings the crazy out in the people. Which uh, brings us to the recent spate of especially violent crimes. I was in getting Bordeaux. to that. Well, of course. I was going to explain that you see sparks in this kind of violent activity. Folks get the devil in them. Fights break out. It feels like it's a lot easier to go for that 44. So you think that's what's behind the shootings? Shootings, boy. You, you news folk talk like you got some boogeyman out there with a gun. All right, now, you're saying the killings... Aren't connected? Course not. Gets hot and people get caught up in some mischief. Man might get tired of hearing his wife complain about the dishes. Another one might be sick of the look of his neighbor's face. And it don't help any we got all this marching and hollering at the courthouse all hours. All right, Chief, tell me. Does New Bordeaux have a colored problem? Color problem? No, sir. What we got here is a black power problem. Well, now, all I ever hear is them talking about how they don't have enough of it. They can't vote or what have you. That, 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 that's the whole thing right there. Now, you go back all the way to, to after the war between the states. We got a whole mess of them free down here. And the next thing you know, they're trying to take over the government. Ain't got a cent to their names, their shoes to walk in and want to be in the Congress. And before you know it, they're strutting around like peacocks. And what you got now? You got the modern Negro, still uneducated, still poor, still can't look after his own self. And you know colors make up 20% of the city, but there's some like 50, 60% of the prison population. Is that right? Factual. And they want to know why the rest of the city scared of them. You want to tap your own community and still yell at the rest of us about how you can't vote or you ain't got no place nice to live? No, you don't do that mess here in New Bordeaux. All right, well, does this mean more attention on Negro crime? Well, let me put it this way. Same way a farm animal needs prodding to go the direction you needed to go, the Negroes must be guided with a firm hand, and that hand must not be afraid to be raised if the situation calls for it. Mm. Strong words from Chief Wilson. And I must admit that I and most of my listeners agree with your assessment. New Bordeaux, until next time. <laughs> Dear listener, this is Remy Duval reminding y'all to tune into my show, Native Son, for scintillating conversation about the topics that matter to you. Now, this week, I am proud to host a very special guest and an old friend of mine, the lovely Mrs. Olivia Marcano. Now, she's coming in to talk to me about her philanthropic work and a project that's very near and dear to my heart. That's Native Son. Native Son! You're a mess, Mr. Duvall. Oh, that I am. Uh, Remy Duvall, that is. Welcome to the Native Sun, dear listener. And this segment, I am joined by the lovely Miss Olivia Marcano. Hey, everyone. Dear listener, some of you know Miss Marcano from her charitable work with underprivileged girls around New Bordeaux. Now, I have known her since she was herself just a girl. A Mr. Duval star. <laughs> oh, just a picture of charm and grace. Folks, I have seen the cotillion photos, and they are glorious. Oh, stop it. <laughs> all right, all right, back to business. Miss Marcano, you are back with an update for our listeners. That's right, Mr. Duval. We're opening up the Duval Trust Scholarship for another month of submissions. Oh, the Duval Trust Scholarship. You know, with a name like that, it sounds just fascinating. <laughs> now, why don't you remind our listeners what that is exactly? I believe this year we're focusing on the sciences. Is that right? That is correct. The Trust is seeking applicants from exceptional backgrounds for this program. We're looking beyond grades while focusing on poise, community service, and moral character. One winning entrant will receive a summer internship at the Frisco Field Science Center next June. Why? Wow, how about that? 
You know, in the last year, our foundation has partnered with the Science Center to construct a new research wing in honor of the late Lucio Marconi. My late husband was a great admirer of the sciences. Before he passed, it was Lucio's dream to give something back to the community. They're going to have all kinds of beakers and burners, books, and, well, whatever else they might need. Remy, what hmm. was your favorite science class in school? Well, I don't know. I mean, a little this, little that. <laughs> I'd say biology, mainly. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask why. Oh, you see how she hurts me, folks. <laughs> oh, but seriously, I want you all to get on down to the Science Center to pick up an application. Now, all materials are due Friday, March 29th, by the end of business. Until next time, welcome to another installment of Native Son, dear listener. Now, I was originally going to spend this time commenting on the Johnson administration's plans to scale back our nuclear program. But instead, I'm joined by the ever-lovely Miss Olivia Marcano. Hello, New Bordeaux. And unfortunately, you have some bad news today, don't you, Olivia? I do. After much deliberation, we've had to discontinue this year's Duval Trust Scholarship Program. <laughs> This is a real shame. Well, the board was simply unable to accommodate some of the concerns of a small handful of applicants out there, and we just... <sighs> I know. I know how you feel. You know, as the man whose family name is on the dang thing, I wanted to get you in here to talk about this for a minute. For those who don't know the details, how do we get here? Well, some of the applicants felt that the selection process wasn't sufficiently inclusive. Listen here, when you put your name in for something like the Trust Scholarship, you understand that we're looking at a lot of different factors, including how well the applicant might fit within the culture at the Science Center. We're not saying any of the candidates didn't belong, but that's a good word for it, Mr. Duval. Some were a better fit. What frustrates me is that the parents of some of these young men are fussing about equality in the selection process. And we keep hearing that word a lot these days, don't we? I'm not sure some of these folks know what they're asking for. It's it's the slow creep of equalism and how we're now supposed to see everyone as the same. L let me ask you a question, Miss Marconnell. Are you and I the same? <laughs> I don't believe so, no. No, no, we certainly are not. But under the flag of equal rights, we're just supposed to ignore background. Advantages, cultural advantages that some folks just don't quite have yet. Now, these folks just aren't culturally there. This is a little hard to explain, but it's real easy to head out into the streets and march and sing and talk about equality and demand it from other folks and force them to give up something of their own in the process. Thing is, this isn't some Soviet bloc nation. This, this right here is the United States of America. And you have to earn what you get. You have to prove yourself, and you can't expect folks to just accept that you're equal because you or some court or some preacher says so. But that doesn't mean to stop trying. That's what this country is about, overcoming who you were before. Well, right, right, of course, of course. But until then, you can't ruin it for the rest of us. You can't demand a seat at the table until you've earned it. I mean, the alternative... Well, the alternative is to slide down that old red road to communism. Give everybody a shot, and if someone thinks that's wrong, well, they don't get any say in the matter. Before long, someone's coming into my house, taking half my belongings and handing them out to any old person they come across. Oh, no, 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 that's not how this country works. That's not why this country was founded. No, no, you gots to earn it and deserve it, folks. Whew. <laughs> well, that's all I, I have to say about that. <laughs> Hello, dear listener. This is Remy Duvall, and on the next Native Son, we'll be speaking with a man who's fought for this country in two wars and is now forced to defend himself at home. A true American hero, I'll be talking to Mr. Hollis Dupree, a man being prosecuted and persecuted for protecting his very home. That's Hollis Dupree on Native Son. Native Son! Dear listeners, in today's very special episode of Native Son, we're going to be speaking with a man some of you know, some of you have heard of, Mr. Hollis Dupree. Some weeks ago, 
Mr. Dupree, a resident in the South Downs, was involved in a tragic shooting. The state of Louisiana has seen fit to indict Mr. Dupree, a veteran, I might add, for this unfortunate incident. Mr. Dupree, welcome to our studio. I've been listening to your program a long time. Thank you, Mr. Dupree. Uh, scoot on a little closer to that microphone. Make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> there you go. Uh, now, first, I, I just want to say on behalf of the listeners, thank you for your service to our country. When did you serve? Oh, they had me out in Luzon in 45. Oh, uh, Marines, right? Yes, sir. Still carry around shrapnel in my arm from that fight. A few years later, they called me back for another go around in uh, Korea. Well, God bless you. It sounds to me like you're a man who's not easily spooked. Ah, oh, it's nothing I really even think about. You know, your country says you got to go do something, you do it. That's just the way it was. Right, right. Which doesn't really fit in the picture of the papers, the northern papers, are trying to paint here. Of a white man who's afraid, paranoid, shooting a pair of innocent colored boys. Well, they, they wasn't there. They're not here in New Bordeaux. We got a different situation with our coloreds. They're doing more than marching here. All right, now some of our listeners might need a little context. Uh, could you elaborate on that? When you look through that peephole, who'd you think was on the other side of that door? I thought it was the killer nigger. Uh, Mr. Dupree, please. Oh, um... I, uh, I, I thought it was that colored man you keep hearing about, the crazy one. Now, I've heard some of these same rumors. It occurs to me we got a class of veteran, a black veteran, who comes back and they seem like, well, they're poisoned somehow. You know, they're violent, angry. I don't feel like it's safe to be a white man in this city no more. Some of these color boys gave up on waving around their signs and sitting in restaurants and on bosses. They got it in their heads. Things need to change. Well, I think all this outside agitation making them crazy. And that's what you were thinking when you saw the McCall fell at the door, isn't it? You don't get many colors out South Downs way. What was I supposed to think when one of them comes banging on my door at all hours? Dear listener, much has been made of McCall and Harris and the fact that they served. But I understand that the U.S. government won't reveal details of McCall's service record. What's more, Harris has a juvenile record that the liberal court seems dead set on keeping under wraps. Now, don't we have a right to know if he had a violent history? Oh, yes, sir. We most certainly do. Mr. Dupree, since being released on your own reconnaissance for the trial... Why don't you tell us all a little bit about what your life has been like? Well, I got color folks yelling outside my house. Somebody threw a brick through my window the other night. Cops been out. I got some local boys have been helping keep an eye on the place. Well, I am truly sorry to hear that. We're just about out of time. Do you have any parting words you'd like to say to our listeners today? Well, I'm sorry you come out like this. I'm sorry them boys is dead, but I only did what anyone else in my situation would do. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Dupree. And thank you, dear listener. Until next time. Name it, son. Hello, dear listener. Remy Duvall here to remind you not to miss the next Native Son. My friend and yours, Senator Walter Jacobs, will be joining me to discuss his re-election campaign and, a little closer to home, we'll talk about some of the toxic books infiltrating our children's schools. That's Native Son, exclusively on WBYU 620. Native Son! Welcome back, dear listener. Now, you hold on now. That's my line. <laughs> oh, dear listener, we are back with this city's own Senator Walter Jacobs. Now, Senator Jacobs... You know, Jacob before the break, I didn't know if you'd be able to speak, Remy. You were so worked up over this book. <laughs> well, can you blame me? I mean, my God, this Styron character. Mm. I just have to wonder who he thinks he is. You're absolutely right, Remy. Come again. 
Bourbon City. You are witnessing history in the making. Remy Duvall is at a loss for words. Well, in all my days, I never thought I'd hear Senator Walter Jacobs, the pit bull of the Paris, say the words, You're right, Remy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happens on occasion. Oh, not very often, though. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> now, now, listen, I, I think this book, The Confessions of Nat Turner by William Styron, I, I don't know. We got to that argument by some of our more liberal constituents that this filth should be taught in our schools. Where they claiming it's their First Amendment right Mm. to teach. Yeah, well, the First Amendment allows us freedom of speech, but it doesn't mean we're obligated to expose our young people to this kind of trash. Exactly. Now, now parents should have more say on the matter than some teacher or East Coast educated bureaucrat. Mm -hmm. You know, especially books that teach such self-loathing and revulsion for the people of the South. Well, that right there, I think that's what caused me the most uh, agitation. Mm. You know, the the notion that we're somehow keeping these young people from new ideas. Yeah. What about protecting them from bad that's ideas? That's right. It comes down to this socialistic type of thing is what mm-hmm. I believe. I agree. Why does white Christian America have to become the whipping boy for every half-baked idea and perversion of history out there? Hmm? I can't think of anything more dangerous than manufacturing sympathy for a killer like Nat Turner. That's right. And then exposing that kind of thinking to young people? Hmm. Oh, in the first place, it's irresponsible. And in the other, beyond telling white young men and women that they're somehow the villains in history, what do you think it says to colored youth who get hold of this garbage? Hmm. What's going to happen to the head of a colored student sitting across from a white student in one of these newly integrated schools after he's read about the wild-eyed mm-hmm. exploits of a murdering slave? That feels deliberate, don't Yes, it, it does. And that's the trick of the intellectual establishment. Since they've christened it as some kind of masterpiece, they also get to paint any dissent from the people who actually live in the South as some kind of proof that we're on the wrong end of the intellectual divide they created. <laughs> Twice in one day. <sighs> You're right, Remy. I mean, amazing, I know. But, yes, it sometimes feels like they don't care how we live down here. Mm-hmm. How we gotten along side by side without having to be on top of one another. Well, that's our senator, dear listener. I want y'all to remember this is the kind of issue you voting on in November. Make your voice heard. That's right. Make them all heard. Until next time, dear listener. Hello, dear listeners. It's Remy Duvall here with an important message. When friends and family come to town and they need accommodations, I always send them to the same wonderful place. The Royal Hotel, located conveniently in downtown New Bordeaux. Sure, it's elegant and luxurious, but hey, that's to be expected. What's more important is the warm, friendly service you find at the Royal. It's everything you want in luxury lodging and more. The Royal Hotel, where the views will literally take your breath away. You know, when I've had a long day and want a quick bite, but don't want anything too fancy, there's a little place I love that feels just like home. The Briar Patch. This is Remy Duval, dear listener, and sure, the Briar Patch is a sponsor, but truth be told, I'd eat there even if they weren't. Why? Because stepping into a Briar Patch is like stepping back into the past. Good old-fashioned southern cooking and prices to match. With locations all over New Bordeaux, there's always a briar patch close by. Good food, good folks, good old-fashioned southern hospitality. Remy Duvall here to tell you that nothing impresses the ladies like a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Whether it's for a special occasion or no occasion at all, Umbel Jardin has everything you need to impress all the lovely ladies in your life. It doesn't matter if it's for your mother, your daughter, your wife, or your intended. Umbel Jardin can create the perfect custom bouquet. Put a smile on the pretty face of your favorite lady today. Call Umbel Jardin. Remy Duvall here, dear listeners. 
You know, being born and raised in New Bordeaux, I know every inch of this fair metropolis. So you know I know what I'm talking about when I tell you that Tasty Patisserie is the best place in town for a fresh beignet and a hot cafe au lait. And beignets are just the beginning, y'all. They have flaky croissants that'll just melt in your mouth, unbelievable pecan pies, and a killer quiche Lorraine. I've been going there since I was a boy. In fact, Tasty Patisserie is a Duval family tradition. Tasty Patisserie for a little bite of heaven. It's Remy Duval, y'all. Right here every day on your radio dial. Need it, son. On WBYU 620. Welcome back to Native Son, dear listener. Well, that was a much-needed break, because old Remy had to put a little more fuel on the fire today. <laughs> Thankfully, my producer, Gilbert. Uh, thank you, Gilbert. He was kind enough to bring me in a full thermos of coffee from downtown's own Tasty Patisserie. Mm. Just hits the spot. You all out there know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. Oh, and Nancy wanted me to remind y'all that Tasty Patisserie is still filling orders for King Cake's for the upcoming Mardi Gras festivities. Now, you tell her Remy sent you, and it's buy two, get one free. Can't beat that. So go on over there and tell her I sent you. Mm. I know, I know, I'm not supposed to enjoy my coffee on air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gilbert's turning red, folks. <laughs> Yo, I tell you, we like to have our fun, dear listener. And that's what Mardi Gras is going to be all about. Good old-fashioned New Bordeaux F-U-M. And if I sound a little enthusiastic, well, I'm sorry about it. But I am. I've talked before about being honored to be part of the crew of knights for the 10th year running. We got a heck of a float plan for y'all, and we have spared no expense in strutting our stuff. Now, this will be my first crew since my daddy died last year, and, uh, dear listener, you know how important Mardi Gras was to him. God rest his soul, he was one of the crew of Knight's founders. He was captain for more years than I can remember, and daddy was Rex back in 1932, for those of you whose memories go all the way back then. Oh, you know, I tell you, he'd spend weeks, that months, preparing. Mm, that man... More than anything else, it was the tradition, the feeling of being part of something, of this city that he loved so. My father believed that every man had his role to play, and every role contributed to the greater whole. Those Reds over in Russia, even the ones here at home, they try to sell that as equality. Mm -mm. No, sir, there's always going to be a king, and each king has his day. Mm. I'll tell you, that coffee sure is fine. On the next episode, you better believe we're going to talk about this here story that President Johnson is considering a deal with the Russians to scale back our nuclear program. We're going to have that and a lot more right here on the Native Sun. Native Sun! Welcome back to Native Sun, dear listener. You know, it's been four weeks since the Reds' tanks rolled through Prague. The Soviet so-called Union has continued to keep its stranglehold on Eastern Europe, and I'll tell you, it's... it's From what I'm reading, these Czechs aren't making it easy for those Ruskies. In fact, the men and women of Czechoslovakia are pushing back against their invaders without using an ounce of force. No guns, no violence, they're just outsmarting the Reds and letting them chase their own tails. How can you look at this revolution and not want to do something? How can you see this revolution and think that the Trotskyists and the Leninists are nothing more than schoolyard bullies, the kind you could topple over if you put your mind to it? How can the Johnson administration not see this? Now, I've been hearing folks worry that, oh, oh we don't want another Vietnam. What I hear... And what the Reds hear when we send a strongly worded message about their invasion of another country is that we just don't want to fight. Now, dear listener, I want you to consider the kind of country we're, we're sliding into 
what kind of values we're showing the rest of the world. Imagine opening up a paper in London or, or in Paris and seeing that your friends in the United States wouldn't be sending armed forces to aid the Czechs, but in the last decade alone, the same country hasn't been shy about sicking the National Guard against its own people over in Little Rock. None of us have forgotten that, have we? Now, now, this, this isn't a dig at the boys serving in the Guard, no. But you see my point. Instead of preserving liberty abroad, the Johnson administration would make us a nation that suppresses liberty at home. Even New Bordeaux can't escape the overreach of the Johnson government. The Attorney General has essentially told the state of Louisiana that it must pursue charges against Hollis Dupree, a man accused of the crime of defending his own home. President Johnson and his people seem more concerned about satisfying interest groups than they are making the world safe from the spread of communism. They seem to lack the courage, yes, I said it, courage, to tell Brezhnev and his thugs to go right back home to Russia. Hanoi, Prague, New Bordeaux, they all say something about this country of ours and our willingness to defend liberty at home and abroad. It's about our priorities. Until next time, this is Remy Duval. <laughs> Dear listener, Remy Duval here, hoping y'all will tune in to the next very special episode of Native Son. I'm going to talk about a bright young man I met who personifies the problems of today's youth. Let's explore the so-called generation gap, see if we can find some common ground with our young people. That's on Native Son. Native Son! There's bravery and revolution in there. It's the foundation of our very country, throwing off the yoke of tyrants and shedding blood for one's very freedom. It's a beautiful thing, dear listener. And if you've got the courage of your convictions, if you're willing to sweat and bleed for them, you may not have my agreement, but you have got my respect. But it seems to me that revolution, the word at least, is being thrown around too freely these days. When you head down to the French ward and see that nest of kids squatting in their little camp there, what do you see? They're dirty. There's no denying that. Messy. Some of them with criminal records. On drugs. Promiscuous. Homosexual. Anti-Christian. They think church is a dirty word. I ask again, what do you see? How do they see themselves? Well, I tell you, I went over there. And I asked. One boy couldn't have been older than 18, 19. He comes over and we get to talking. Let's call him Bobby. It's a revolution, man. This boy who's barely old enough to shave tells me, with absolute conviction, too. So I say, revolution against what, son? What are you, no, who are you fighting against? Now, this young man doesn't miss a beat because he's been taught well. He tells me it's a revolution against the system. The system? Like you can just bottle up every complaint you have with the world into one little word. The system is keeping you out of school, from getting a job, poor, hungry, or whatever else. Anyway, he tells me, we've got reefer and free love and music, and we don't need what you've got, old man. That's what he said to me. Sex, drugs, music, all they need, and no one's going to tell them otherwise. They think that's brave, moral even. Inasmuch as these children believe anything can be moral, from where I'm sitting, there's is simply a philosophy of if it feels good, then by golly do it. Fall of Rome stuff, essentially. Well, let me tell you, there's a second act to this story, and you're not going to like it, dear listener. In spite of it all, I like this boy. He was smart, articulate. I feel like 20 years younger and a few bad decisions later, I could be him. So I thought I'd go back and talk to him. Bring him a cup of coffee and see what other thoughts might be bouncing around in that head of his. When I got there this morning, I went asking for Bobby. 
Then another boy, no older than him, maybe even a little younger, said Bobby was gone. Gone where? I asked. Well, he's dead, mister, this other boy says to me. Then he lit up a uh, joint and went back to join his friends. I found out later from a friend on the police force that Bobby died from a heroin overdose. If you want to know what their revolution looks like, there it is. Dirt, fornication, and dying young. Clean your house, dear listener. If you've got a child obsessed with rock music, just toss those records in the garbage. Are they doing drugs? Who are they spending time with? Who are they listening to? Are they, and this is an important one now, are they turning their backs on God? They could be turning into another one of these revolutionaries. And we've all seen how that turns out. Until next time, dear listener, this is Remy Duvall. Hello, New Bordeaux. Native Sun. This is Remy Duvall, urging y'all to tune in to Native Sun. We have a heck of a show lined up, one I know you won't want to miss. Only on WBYU 620. Hey, dear listener. It's been a heck of a few months, hasn't it? But we done with 1968 yet? <laughs> Welcome back to Native Sun. You know, a quiet corner of South Downs became a little less so earlier this week. Seems a fracas broke out there. Maybe even a whole to-do. Colored couple was moving into one of them new duplexes coming out that way. But with all the violence going on in town, the folks who lived there had, uh, well, they had objections. Now, the way I hear, words were exchanged. The police had to come out, and sometime after midnight on Monday, that poor colored family found a cross burning on their lawn. Next morning, the colored family moved out, presumably to a place over in the hollow. Now, this isn't the first time someone's lit up a cross in New Bordeaux, and it won't be the last. Oh, I'm not condoning it, mind you, but this fire isn't South Downs fire. It's not New Bordeaux's fire. This is President Johnson's fire. Lit with the Civil Rights Act, this president threw on more fuel with the passage of his Fair Housing Act. Fair? Oh. How is this fair to the people in South Downs? How is this fair to the colored family? The integration's all fine and good, but it should never take choice away from a community. Choosing who you get to live next door to, what your neighborhood looks like. Those are basic freedoms. And we got a killer running around this city. Police, God bless them, are doing their best to find him, but it's an open secret that he's colored. He's a veteran. He's very skilled at what he does. Many of the folks he's killed are, point of fact, white. And no one is saying that all colored folks are capable of inciting this kind of monstrousness. But the rest? Mm. They are susceptible. Your average colored can get swept up in violence, carried away with it. And I hate to put it this way, but they just don't know any better. This violence spreads. There's no clearer picture of this than the death of Reverend Dr. King. Now, I won't speak ill of the dead. Louisiana had his challenges with the doctor once or twice, but let's move on. This man preached nonviolence. Nonviolence. So what happened after he died? Hmm? Oh, we definitely saw some violence as news of his death spread, didn't we? And what happens the next time our city's colored folks get worked up about something and they spread out in other neighborhoods? Do you want to see looting downtown? Hmm? Riots in the French Ward? Hey, how about a fire in Irish Point? They can't help it. Which brings us back to South Downs. What happened there? Who could say this was an overreaction on the part of the white community there? This racial friction created by forced and fairness on the white and colored people, that's what you saw. We can get along... 
But that doesn't mean we need to be living side by side. A white man has the right to keep his family safe. That first burning cross in South Downs, that is a fire that will spread. From one home to another, and to another. To Point Verdun, Barclay Mills, wherever you live, wherever we see this forced integration, these things will happen. These things will happen, folks. Until next time, dear listener. Dear listener, this is your good friend Remy Duval, reminding y'all to tune in to Native Sun. Native Sun! On WBYU 620. Welcome back to Native Sun, dear listener. How y'all doing? I just left Leroy's, so you know how I'm doing. Oh, you know Leroy's. I've gone on and on about his five spice gumbo and his wife Edda's new crackling cornbread recipe. Mmm, mmm. I want y'all to get over there this week because by popular demand, they're bringing back their sweet potato bread this month. Mmm. Now, Etta, you see, she's a sweet old gal. Funny, too. She come over to take my order and she says, uh, <laughs> she say, uh, Remy, I heard a rumor about you. I knew what she was talking about before the words even left her mouth. Are you in the Southern Union, Remy? Oh, people like to talk, dear listener. That's just what people do. So, let's talk about the Southern Union. See, there's this image folks have about grown men in sheets and dancing around some fire in the swamp, hooting and hollering and praise be to Robert E. Lee. This is the South. And around this country, folks think the South is the Klan. It's got so bad, people in New Bordeaux think a fraternity like the Southern Union is one and the same. It is not. Let me repeat that. The Southern Union is not the Klan. Nobody's setting crosses on fire or marching down Main Street. It's not some secret to, uh, cabal controlling this city. And the Southern Union certainly doesn't mean anyone any harm. Am I in the Southern Union? No, I am not. But I do understand that they're just concerned business owners and professionals in New Bordeaux. It's like a, a trade organization, really. Now, some of these fellas are keeping an eye on some of the changes happening in this city. Like you, they look outside their window. And they wonder about all these protests. This, uh... Agitation, which never seems to stop these days. Organizers and uh, and marchers and uh, activists. It's that kind of agitation that gets rumors going. Now, I'm not worried about how you feel about the Southern Union. Those boys will be fine. I do not speak for them. I speak for you, dear listener. You know me. You know my family. The Duval name has been part of this city since my great-granddaddy came here and cleared out a patch of swamp that helped the first village reach the Gulf. The Duvals have helped you find land and homes, and we continue to do that to this day. That reputation behind our name and its tie to this city is important to me. What I'm saying is, you know who I am. You know where I come from. And I hope, after all this time and all that my family has done for this city, that it means something. Thank you, dear listener. Until next time. Hello, dear listener. This is Remy Duval, urging y'all to tune in for a show you won't want to miss. I will tackle a topic that is ripping this country apart. The great cities of this nation are in flames, from Baltimore to Oakland, from Kansas City to New Bordeaux. This hate, this violence, this cancer 
threatens to tear down everything we hold dear. I am talking about black supremacy. Don't miss Native Son. Native Son! Welcome to Native Son. Have you been reading the papers, dear listener? I've been... I've been obsessed with the papers lately. Now, here's something from earlier this year I found especially interesting. When the first patrolman from the Oakland Police Department came into view, the suspects opened fire. For the next 90 minutes, the police were in a pitched gunfight under fire from shotgun, rifle, and small arms. One officer, who asked to remain anonymous, says that between rounds of fire, the assailants yelled, Black power. Black power. Or the new black supremacy movement is real, dear listener. It is a poisonous strain of thought, infecting colored communities across the country. It's right here in New Bordeaux. You better believe it. When I was growing up, you looked after your own. Each one of us was responsible for our little plot of the world. We were shepherds. But these black supremacists aren't shepherds. They're wolves, looters, and criminals preying on their own communities. Now, this isn't just something happening in Oakland or Cleveland or Philadelphia. It's a, it's a black-skinned demon prowling our streets. Assassinating white businessmen. It's a killer. A thug with a gun. Turning the training that this nation's armed forces have given him against the people he was sworn to serve. Now, I do not know how many colored folks are within reach of the sound of my voice. But I am asking you to look at who you are allowing into your communities. Are they shepherds? Or are they wolves? to the United States government, which sees fit to intrude in our homes and our communities. You have failed this city. You have failed it with the unequal application of your own laws. And I say your laws, President Johnson, because it's your so-called Civil Rights Act which has brought us to this point. You have created an illusion of equality. And to the rest of New Bordeaux? Well... <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you how to deal with predators. But I know the upstanding citizens of this town haven't forgotten what it means to exercise their Second Amendment rights. Oh, that might be what it takes, dear listener. For those of us who stand united within the law to use the rights derived from God and our Constitution to enforce and protect the law. No. Not just that. Folks of this great nation are, I believe, ready to do whatever it takes to defend ourselves from tyranny. They're not going to just wait for the colored insurrectionists or federal bullies to come for them. If need be, they, we, will refresh that old tree of liberty. I want you all to think on that. Until next time. Dear listener, this is your good friend Remy Duval. Remind y'all to tune in to Native Sun. Native Sun on WBYU 620. Welcome, welcome, dear listener, to another episode of Native Sun. I'm your host, Remy Duval. How y'all doing out there? Because I'm doing just fine. Glad that winter's finally behind us, and I'm sure you are as well. So, what's going on in your world this weekend, dear listener? I have my Saturday night all planned out. I'm going to put on a nice suit because you know old Remy has to go out looking sharp. I'm going to get myself a haircut, and I'm going to have dinner with 31 very special Americans. Now, who are these people who are going to get me to give up a night playing cards with Miss Marcano, you ask? Well, I'll tell you who. 31 young men, heroes, who have come home from overseas fighting for this country in Vietnam, and we plan to do right by them. You know, dear listener, I keep hearing about our boys coming back and not getting the warm welcome they deserve. They leave their homes, their families, and they come back to peaceniks and the so-called hippies trying to tear them down. No, sir, not in my town. Not in New Bordeaux. These boys come out of South Downs, born and raised in River Row and even Point Verdun. 
and we're going to feed these boys. We're going to show them a good time. Now, not everyone shares my, our views on the subject. You know who I'm talking about. Protesters. Protesters out in front of the courthouse telling our veterans they're not welcome. No, no, I'm, I'm not angry at them. No, no, I'm not. I think they're just a, a little lost like some of the other young folks in this country. They don't know how to contribute. They figure anyone who does is in the wrong. Words like loyalty and tradition don't speak to them. No, no, they're moldy old ideas. Same with God. And so too goes country and liberty. Discarded because these young folks see the cost of these things and they can't stomach it. So let's welcome our heroes home. Let's serve them a nice home-cooked meal. Let's thank them for all they've done for this country. Now, old Remy will spring for the whole thing. That's right, all our guests need to bring is their appetites. So if you're hearing this, and you know a vet who just got back from active service, you tell him to come on down to the Yacht Club in Frisco Field Saturday night at 7 p.m. Because we are going to treat them right. Newsflash! New Bordeaux needs a professional football team. Urgently, dear listener, our city needs the roar of the crowds on Sunday. The smell of hot dog. Mm -mm. New Bordeaux absolutely needs the added expense of a brand new stadium. One our city would foot the bill for, of course, along with all of the traffic and congestion that would come with the new stadium complex. Oh, and let's not forget the part where no team has been willing to offer us more than a 10-year contract. Y'all see where I'm going with this, don't you? Last year, the prospect of getting our own pro team sounded too good to be true. The mayor was promising us a new multi-use venue for pro ball games and events, both of which are features our city could absolutely use. But as the talks have gone on, it seems like the only people a new stadium would benefit are the mayor, the city council, and whatever team is able to suck a new Bordeaux into footing the bill for this awfully bad idea. And it is a bad idea. No one seems to know how many millions of dollars this thing is going to cost or where the money's going to come from. Well, I'll tell you where. From you and me, dear listener. <laughs> That's right. New taxes. We don't know where this thing would go. A negotiation process that's been as shadowy as it's been rushed. And we're talking about the big boy fantasies from a handful of city bureaucrats. If your memory goes back far enough, dear listener, that's how we ended up with Baron Saturday's Fun Park out in the hollow. It's an eyesore, and who knows what kind of criminal element it's attracting. Does it seem like rambling Ray Papado's trying to Recapture the glory of them college football days? All right, all right, I apologize. There's no need for me to talk about the mayor in that way. But City Hall is chasing after a football team while the proposal to legalize gambling is just gathering dust. Oh, what's that? You hadn't heard about this? <laughs> well, I'm sure you haven't, with good reason. City Hall has worked hard to keep it on the hush-hush. Late last year, the mayor's office blocked a proposal to allow gambling in New Bordeaux. Now, I know, I know, you hear the word gambling and it conjures up back alley games and the seediness of something like Vegas. But that's not what City Hall is trying to squash. What if we could have Monte Carlo on the Mississippi? Legalized games right here in Bourbon City, bringing in folks to this jewel of the South. That's not just money from penny slots. That's jobs in hotels, restaurants, more folks coming through the French ward. Why, instead of costing taxpayers like you and me a bunch of good money, legalized gambling would pay us. Even a decent chance our taxes could go down. Make your voices known here, New Bordeaux. Remind City Hall and the mayor that this is a democracy. If you want to see New Bordeaux build something for the future and not drag this city deeper into debt, write to the mayor's office and let them know you want City Hall to make the sure bet on legalized gambling. Hey, I know that's what I'm going to do. Until next time, dear listener, this is Remy Duval.
They're coming for you, New Bordeaux. They're coming for your wives. Your children aren't safe. Neither are your car or your homes. Mm. Who are they? <coughs> oh, <clears throat> I'll tell you who they are. The activists on the street. Sea of the unemployed and unmotivated, demanding we give them a piece of the American dream. The cowards who would tell us to abandon our God-given mission to defeat communism overseas. Who tell you and me and anyone stupid enough to listen that the U.S. of A. ain't the greatest goddamn country on earth. And... And, and listen here, it's not just the agitators and the hippies. <laughs> oh, no, no. Let's not forget our own homegrown menaces. The legitimate businessmen who, who, shh, shh, oh, we should never say their names out loud, dear listeners. But these men with dirty money, these greasy wop criminals in nice suits are part of the same rot. They think their money puts them on the same level as decent Christian white men. Men that built this city. And what did they ever contribute, hmm? Nothing. No, they just take. Just part of the same rot. The same kind of takers. Uh, great fat ticks draining this city we love bone dry. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, y'all. I'm not supposed to be here. Mm -mm. But no, dear listener, I'm not scared. I'm angry. And you should be angry, too. Now, someone is out to kill me. I'm not talking about the gradual way the looters, the crooks, the hippies, and the communists are trying to strangle the life out of this great city of ours are. But you just let that nigger piece of trash come. He's going to see what New Bordeaux is really about. Who this city really belongs to. I love this city so goddamn... You get your hands off me. I'm... I love this city so... Get back from... Sons of bitches. I'll be back, goddammit. You cocksuckers ain't heard the last of Remy Duval. <laughs> I know some of y'all was expecting Remy, but he ain't here. I'm sad to report that Mr. Duval, the host of this here program, has passed away. His friend, Ms. McConnell, wanted to come on and say something, but she wasn't up to it, so she asked me to say a few words for her. She says, Dear New Bordeaux, we have lost one of our favorite sons, a leader in the community, a beloved broadcaster, and my friend. Remy was a religious man, and I'm sure he would appreciate it if you kept him in your prayers. Oh, the hell with that. Remy was murdered, folks. And some of you may have heard what happened on the news, and I don't want to get into the particulars of it on account of it being an ongoing investigation. But we're going to find out who did it, New Bordeaux. And I'll tell you this much, God help him when I do. Mm -hmm. We look out for our own in New Bordeaux. And if anybody out there thinks that the murder of a white Christian citizen, a citizen whose roots go back to the very founding of this city, is going to go unanswered, well, you all don't know how I run things in this town. Yes, sir, there will be retribution. You all got my word on that. Late heart seemed dark, silvery moon is shining through the trees. Cast to me, you sound of kisses floating on the breeze. Act one, 